all through from the first Wednesday as you're moving on with the month by the grace of God, we've been riding on the wings of divine healing. The first day I talked of the, the physical healing. The second day I touched the area of the marriage healing. But healing is wide. I'm again now to open another chapter of healing. And the chapter today I'm going to talk about of healing is the area of money, finances. The beginning of all health is your understanding, knowledge that you carry, but it is good to understand the place of money. Everybody living under the sun, you need money. You don't just want money. And that's why the best subject for us as believers is the money subject. I always say, the pastor who stops you from getting the gospel of money, that is the devil of the day. As long as the pastor that you are as close to or you are around loves to preach about money, then under his preaching you cannot lack money. Why? Because what you preach is what you become. What you are, what you are being preached to is what you become. So if you are far from money message, then you can never be uh, an agent or the legend uh, in the field of finances. Can you turn together with me in the book of Ecclesiastes, the chapter number 7, and verse number uh, 12? Ecclesiastes, the chapter number 7, and verse number 12. This is what the wise man said. He said, wisdom is a defense. Money also is a defense. But the excellence of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Wisdom is a defense. Money also is a defense. What do I have to say this afternoon? You are defenselessly defenseless without money. You are defenselessly defenseless without money. Money is a defender according to my definition. Money is a defender according to my definition. This is how I put it one day. That money is a defender that defends mankind from shameful living. I hope you have your book and pen. You can write this. Money is a defender that defends a man from shameful living. Show me a man without money in the society. Then I will show you a man without money in the society. Show me a man without money in the community then I will show you a defenseless man within the community. So you need money. You don't just want money. You need money. Many believers today, they are afraid of money. Actually, they call those who talk more about money the devil worshippers. I'm humble to let you know that God owns all things, including money. Money is among the creations God created. And that's why in Haggai chapter number 2, and verse number 8, the Bible says, silver is mine, and the gold also is mine. So money is among the creations created by God to serve with mankind. I define money as a co-servant. God ordained to work with you. I define money as the co-servant that God has ordained to work with you. You are defenselessly defenseless if you work without money. You are defenselessly defenseless if you work without money. To be moneyless is to be worthless. The world we live in determines or they try to dictate your words by what you own financially. We are in the days of financial prosperity. I would like you to know that. We are in the days of financial prosperity. It is our season as the believers in Christ. I pray for you as you are getting my voice very clear that from today you shall never lack money in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I heard this from my father one day. He said, my spiritual father, he says, to live without money, it annoys. To be anointed yet you lack money, it really annoys. So anointing minus money, it always annoys. God forbid 
that will not be a portion in Jesus' name. As a pastor or a prophet or a friend in the body of Christ watching me right now live, I pray for the grace of financial prosperity to land on you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Meanwhile, I have a few advices also to share with you. Number one, you need bank account. The moment you open bank account, you are set for the financial flows. But this is my simple advice. To borrow money from the bank is telling God, God is too slow. I agree with account opening of the bank, but I don't agree with the borrowing policy. I have bank account, but the best I can do in my bank account is to put my money there. If an agent from the bank comes to sell the policy of borrowing to me, I don't accept it. Why? Borrowing is going against the covenant. So you don't need to borrow money. We live in a world where people borrow to live. Everything is borrowed. I want to challenge you. A borrowed money never pays well. A begged money never pays well. A borrowed money and a begged money ever pays well well. So I want to challenge you from today. You don't need a borrowed money to prosper financially. You don't need to beg for money to prosper financially. It is the best thing for you to understand the personality of money and why money exists. How do I call money again? I call money an agent who stands to answer the most questions of your life. Money does not answer the all questions of your life, but money answers the most questions of your life. Ecclesiastes chapter number 10 and verse number 19. Ecclesiastes chapter number 10 and verse number 19. Let's travel there very quickly. 10 and verse number 19. This is what the Bible says, the wise man says. A feast is made for laughter, and wine maketh merry, but money answers all things. When you have money at hand, you have an answer to the most things at your hand. When you have money at your hand, then you have the answer to the most things of life. I pray for you. You shall not lack in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, another advice I can tell you in life as you are living, though you need money, but money is not the first thing you need or the first person you need. Remember, I've defined money as a co-servant. God has ordained for you to work with money so that money can defend you from shameful living. Money is a defender that defends mankind from shameful living. Money is a defender. It defends you. Money defends you. So you are defenselessly defenseless without money. 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 So money defends, and money answers the most questions of life. Money defends, and it also answers the most questions of your life. Now, how do you get money? Quickly, because of time, because we don't have a lot of time to stay. How do you get money? Number one, very quickly, you need to understand your place of relationship with the God of money. Gold and silver is mine. Gold and silver is mine. Gold and silver is mine. Now, there is the owner of money until you are connected right with the owner of money. You are disconnected from it. Until you are connected with the owner of money, money will keep on disconnecting from you. So it is a very bad thing when money disconnects from you. You need relationship with the God of money. In Psalms, chapter number 24 and verse number 1, Sammy says, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, and all that are in the world. Money is not out of the world. Money is in the world. So God owns money, and he also owns you. So you need relationship with the God. Of money. The people who do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits with their life of finance. I cannot be poor. I can never be poor, no matter how I look like. 
what I vow all the days of my I can never be poor, and I will never be. I'm a prosperous agent in my generation, financially. So I want you, someone who is watching me from wherever you are, by the grace of God, as you are sitting under the sound of my voice, you don't need to be afraid of financial prosperity. You don't just need money, you need good amount. Good money. But until you relate with good God of money, you cannot have the good money of your good God. Daniel chapter number 11, verse number 32, and part, B, part C of it, the people who do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Number two, how do you get money? Before you money lands into your hand, you must understand what I call the power of arrangement. Jesus said you cannot serve God and mammon. Do you know what he was trying to say? He was trying to control the thinking pattern when it comes to arrangement. Many people fail financially, not because of the devil, but they don't know how to arrange the money. We live in the world that is controlled by love, but love only makes a person successful who knows how to arrange himself. Money is a creation, not greater than you. You are greater than money. Remember, money is a co-servant with you, according to my definition. But money should not be above you. Money should be, you should be above money. You are the Lord over money. Money is not the Lord over you. Money is a co-servant that should serve with you. He is a defender. Money is a defender that defends you from shameful living. What am I trying to say? You need to know how to arrange money. And number one, as you are relating with God, God deserves the first love. The first love you give to God, Matthew chapter number 6, 33. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, which means in your love, first of all, love God with your all. Deuteronomy chapter number 6 and verse number 5. He says, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, not some. A man has some hearts, but God deserves your all heart. When it comes to financial prosperity, you love God first. Love God first. You don't need to give money more time than God when it comes to relationship. Number two, you need to love yourself. The second love you deserve, the second love. First class love, that is God's love. Second class love, that is your love. First class love, that is your love, the God's love. Second class love, that is your love. I don't love money than myself. I don't spend a lot of time in the field of money than myself. I work on myself because it is through me working on myself I make more money. I relate with God. I spend a lot of my time with God to know how the direction of the day can be. Number two, I don't spend time in the field of money. I spend time in my own field, making myself. If you don't spend time in your personal love and make yourself, money will break you beyond repair. Money will break you beyond repair. Money will break you beyond repair. So I challenge you right now, first love God, second love yourself. Have time to pray for your day. Have time to read books in line with finances. Have time to meditate. Have time to, 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 to listen to the messages of men and women of God that God has engraced in the area of their, of their financial prosperity. Listen to them, meditate on their line. Nothing succeeds under the sun accidentally. Financial prosperity is not accidental race. It is not a mistake race. It is a practical race. You have to practically sit down to make things work right. I love you the love of Christ, but may God make you, and may you live to enjoy the blessings of God as you are living financially blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm believing God for you that all the stress that you've ever went through because of financial pressure, from today it comes to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. So spend time with yourself. Don't sleep all night. One of my friends one day told me that those who sleep all night, they end up failing all day. So you don't need to be an all-night sleeper to end up an all-day failure financially. You shall prosper financially in Jesus' mighty name. 
So the third class is what I call the class of money. Money deserves love. The money you don't love cannot work with you. Money deserves love. The money you don't love cannot work with you. Money deserves love. The money you don't love cannot work with you. But money does not deserve the first class love. If you try it there, God will kill you. <clears throat> money does not deserve the second class love. If you try that, you will kill yourself. Money deserves the third class love. Money deserves the third class love. Which means once you've worked on your relationship with God and you've built your own relationship with yourself in your own self-love, I call it so, then now money comes in the third position. It is a good thing when money plays the role in the third place in your life. I'm challenging you, my beloved Christians, because I've seen money making many to run out of the church. Pastor, we are busy looking for money. Let me tell you, in life, Relate with God in the first place. Relate with yourself in the second place. And third class, give it to God, to money. So money deserves, uh, money deserves the third class love. Now, salvation is, against, is not against your financial prosperity. That is to say, God is not against your financial prosperity. God knows very well when you lack money, you lack a defender. You lack an answer. So, you need to balance your love. That is the secret to financial prosperity. And what is the best ground for your financial prosperity? Because salvation works together with money. Poverty is not ashamed of your title. Poverty is not ashamed of your age. Poverty is not ashamed of your nation. But poverty is only afraid of your understanding. I want to tell you that you need, your, you need to keep your understanding alive for you to ride beyond poverty. It is not your effort that takes you out of poverty. It is your understanding that takes you out of it. Beloved, I wish you above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. God is out for your prosperity, but your understanding dictates. Your understanding dictates your level. So what is the best ground? Number one, you need to create a work system. Financial prosperity is not accidental. You have to go practically, and the practical way is the working way. Pastors, under the sound of my voice, get me very clear. During the time of coronavirus, I saw what I'm talking about. I had a practical experience. While men and women of God who only depend in the church, expecting only offerings and tithes, really suffered. That was the day I realized working is so good. I am working, sir. I'm a businessman. Create a system for service. Don't sit. God is a prosperous God because he ever works. God is a prosperous God because ever he works. Laziness kills financially. Working heals financially. Don't be lazy. I prefer man of God, you need business. That you can stop anytime and go pray. You don't need to be employed. But if you are employed, thank God. But remember, you cannot prosper well financially as a man of God if you are still employed. No. No. There is a time for employment, it is for a season. I pray for you, may your season to get out of employment be now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But now you need to work. A workless man ends up a worthless man financially. 
You need to work hard. Wake up very early. Prepare yourself. After your relationship, go to work. Don't sit. Sitting never pays financially. Sitting pains financially. Sitting never pays financially. Sitting pains financially. Sitting never pays financially. Sitting kills. Create business. Have business. If you don't have the capital to start, go to the building construction site and ask for a job. Start doing something. Don't sit. The world of today never pays the lazy. The world of today pains the lazy people. So don't be a lazy pastor. Don't be a lazy brother. Don't be a lazy sister. Get out to work. Don't sit at that home. Don't sit in the house. Go out and work. Get out and work. Get out and work. Financial prosperity can only be gained by working. I want to tell you, great men and women right now who are financially prosperous, they are working people. They are not leasing people. They are not leasing people. They don't wish their way to financial prosperity. They work their way to financial prosperity. They don't wish their ways to financial prosperity. They work their ways to financial prosperity. So this lunch hour right now, I'm believing God for the strength to rest within your spirit right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The strength to go for work, receive it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And if you are here, perhaps you are jobless, you are believing God for a job before you start your own business, I decree that chain of joblessness is hereby broken in the name of Jesus Christ. To those of us who are believing God for the business breakthrough, I pray that the doors of your business to be opened in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So serve your world on your way to financial prosperity. Serve your people on your way to financial prosperity. Serve your society right on your way to financial prosperity. Everybody we can call financial prosperous agent today is a worker is a servant. Show me a rich man who is not a worker. Rich men never sit. I listened to one of my friends and also spiritual father. He said, all night sleepers ends up all day failures. Don't be lazy. Even at night, you can still be working. Let your mind not be asleep. Napoleon Bonaparte one day was once asked, how do you suggest that a person should sleep? Napoleon Bonaparte said, a man should sleep six hours, a woman should sleep seven hours, but a fools or fools are the one only permitted to sleep for eight hours. I know you are not a fool, you are a wise man. Receive grace to work in the name of Jesus Christ. One of the warning as I'm winding up my sermon this afternoon is that don't despise the day of a small beginning. Let's rush to the book of Zechariah, the chapter number four. Zechariah, the chapter number four, as I'm winding up by the grace. Zechariah, the chapter number four. Quickly, because of time, chapter number four of Zechariah. Verse number 10. He says, For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice, and they and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the seven, they are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. One day, me and my beloved wife. <laughs> my wonderful wife, I'm sorry. Uh, we had an appointment with one man of God in the land of Kisumu by the name Bishop Mark Kegoi. I heard of that appointment and I had to tell my wife, join me to this visit. And we happened to meet with him in his hotel somewhere here in Gambogi, in Vihiga County. And I really had a desire to hear the word from this man of God. So when we had time with him, I was praying, Lord, 
let this man speak a lie, word that will change my life. And the man decided to share with us. He shared with me two secrets of life. He said there is a time he was training in ministry. There was no money, but the burning desire was there to serve. He wanted a lot of money. Then he went before the Lord with his hands and said, Lord, I pray, bless the works of my hands. Ah, as she was talking, I was listening. My wife was quiet, and I said, this is my word. But in the process of our talk, Bishop said, the only thing you don't need, my sons, to do, don't despise the day of a small beginning. Two words made me to change my thinking pattern, my mind set up. I realized that God need to bless the work of my hand. So it is the work of your hand that causes you to be a blessed man financially. And he said, don't despise the day of small beginning. I said, wow, is this the secret of this man? Okay. Now I went back to my house. In the corner of my prayer room, I said, Lord, I pray, bless the works of my hand. But I remember the word that he said, don't despise the day of small beginning. Nothing that is said to be great that starts big. I always said, if you want to start a business, don't start a bigger business than you. You better start small things that you are bigger than and grow it up. Don't despise the day of small beginning. The reason why many people run to bank, they want to start what is bigger than them. I refuse that. I would rather sink without a borrowed money than flying with it. I don't despise my small beginning. I appreciate my small beginning. I give God thanks for my small beginning and thank God for where I am today. Thank God for where I am right now financially. I pray for you. If you have the vision to start the big, the business, don't start what is bigger than you. Start what you are bigger than and grow it up. Faith grows small by small. So small is the language of faith. Small is the language of God. Don't be afraid of starting small. Start what you are bigger than. Don't start what is bigger than you. No. By the grace of God, I have good news for you. I know you might be jobless, you need a job. I know you need financial breakthrough. You need a miracle as I'm talking. Most of the time, I've never end my session without saying this. I can be a good teacher. Thank God you've heard the revelation from my voice and from my spirit. I am a good preacher, I know that. But the only thing I am not a good in doing, it is a good savior. Jesus saves, he saved me. You are not saved if you are not saved. He says, when I call today and I knock at your door, please open up. Don't harden your heart. Let me tell you, the greatest miracle you need today, my sister, my brother, wherever you are, the greatest miracle you need is the miracle of forgiveness of sin. Sin is a burden in the heart, a heavy load. Sin, you cannot be in sin and shine. Anytime you are a sinner, you sink down. One of my bishops used to say, when you sink down, you stink down. So sin will lead you to a sinking platform. Huh. And when you are sinking, you will start stinking soon. I want you to get out of that stinking stage by giving your life to Christ. I'm a good preacher, a good teacher, but not a good savior. Jesus is the good savior, the great savior. Are you tired of that sin? Are you tired of that torment? Get yourself out because it is your personal responsibility to accept Christ. The wise man says, as many as have received him, to them gave he power to become his sons. John chapter number 1 and verse number 12. And what a great voice that I heard from the mouth of Paul the apostle. He said, once one is in Christ, 
The old has gone and the new has come. Listening to Prophet Hubert Angel, my friend, yesterday night in my house, he said something that when you are renewed, it is God re take, replacing your own spirit and putting his own spirit in you. It is God becoming right in partnership with you and you start living in a renewed life. Are you set for a renewed life? I have a privilege right now. Anywhere you are, I want to bow down your head. Don't look at me. Look at Jesus. Don't hear me now. Hear Jesus. And pray this prayer after me. Wherever you are, sons and daughters of God, I know this is your day of change. Your life will never remain the same. Lift up your voice and pray this prayer after me as I pray. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I appear before you by this afternoon. The great God of liberation, my Life has to change. Forgive my sins. I am a sinner. Wash me with your precious blood. Sanctify me by your own holy word. Write my name in the book of life. Remove my name from the book of death and condemnation. Mighty God, today I confess you as I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Daddy, take all the glory. Thank you for saving my soul, and may your name, my Father, be exalted. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Beloved of God, wherever you are, you are now part of the kingdom citizens. You have been saved. My advice for you is that you go to any nearest church close to where you are. If you are in the land of Kenya, in the land of Kisumu, we are in a place called Paoremo in Manyata B. Our church is known as Hope Embassy. Now, I think you can take my number. Just write it. It will help you for prayer and counseling and for other programs of the day. 0716-804-213 or class 254-716-804-213. Pastor Bernard Praise. Check on my YouTube. You'll find Pastor Bernard Praise. And also, you can go to the Facebook, PST Bernard Praise. Enjoy your day. May God bless you so much. To those of us who have given their life to Christ, please, I would like you to bow down your head as I pray for you for the last. The great God of liberation, these dear ones are blessed. The gift of salvation they have received, let them take roots downwards and bear fruits upwards. This is their season for change. I pray for, the financial, for their financial change of story in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And now, to you who are believing God for the financial prosperity, I pray... You will never sin again because of money. You will never lie or commit adultery again because of money. No man shall ever jump over you to waste you because of money lack. You are prospering financially. I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May God bless you so much in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' blessed name, we pray and believe. God bless you. Let's meet. Next Wednesday, a time like this, in Jesus' mighty name.